Welcome back, fans. We are here in Game 7 of our backyard football 2002 season playthrough with the Chicago Bears with the worst combination of backyard players for this game. So we are scheduled to play the uh, Front Yard West uh, team, the Arizona Cardinals, here in Game 7, marking the halfway point of the season. I promised we'd go check out the league leaders before we go into the game, and Billy Jean Blackwood going to make an... Uh, statistical impact on this league with 147 attempts doubling the next closest Eric LeBeau on the 49ers. 78 completions, 27 TDs, and only 5 picks. QB rating at 116, obviously, before the ESPN QBR. And dominating in yardage, 1,700 yards there. Not too many uh, long passes, though. Slower receivers. Sidney Weber and Ahmed Khan are racking, racking up the uh, receptions. Sidney Weber taking the lead in yards as well. Yards per reception, no. Longest, but definitely TDs at 16, beating Jimmy Rockfish, Denver Broncos. Um, and rushing, you're not going to expect too much, although Sidney Weber is pulling down the league uh, leading title, the, the league title for uh, rushing touchdowns right now with five, with only 70 yards in, uh, total. It's less than you get in one game. Uh, I haven't made any place kicks, I believe, yet, and not been punting very much as well. Uh, kick returns, I'm not there either. But Ben Nunn and Brett Favre, the Devin Hesters of the uh, BFL for this year, punt returns four players in the top uh, because other teams, for some reason, don't receive punts. I don't understand where that came from. Total yardage, not very much. But uh, Sidney Weber and Ackman pulling in a decent uh, return rate at 6-5. and five. And we'll see the tackles. You got Sidney Weber and Jorge Garcia at 7 and 10. And then none for loss. I haven't been blitzing a lot this year. 10 interceptions for Ahmed and 5 for Jorge Garcia. Return yards 44 for Ahmed. That's pretty substantial considering his, considering his speed. And Ronnie Dobbs recovering those fumbles for us at 5. And we're back there. So total yardage gained. We are only 4, surprisingly. Passing were first. And rushing were probably dead last. I'm going to have to check that overall. Uh, total points scored, I am first in passing, definitely, and with rushing. Surprising. Not been turning the ball over that much, and punt return yards, there's no other team punts. Uh, we are first. So let's get going with our game against the Cardinals now. I haven't changed anything in the playbook. I'm going to check out my offense really quick, make sure that that's straightened out, and that would not be good. And we need to put Angelo Lavecchio as our kicker, as we normally would. So without further ado, we're uh, taking on the Arizona Cardinals to make their home at the turf. Boise State, blue turf at the Dimitri Dome. So this is where Dimitri lives. And Angela booms one to begin the game, and that will start off the Cardinals at our uh, their own 20-yard line. So Judy Abunza, quarterbacking the Cardinals, looks like she has decent speed. And Judy Abunza taking two hits from two rushing bears and making a considerable gain on second down, setting up Fred Benson for a quick eight-yard gain on a run, giving the Cardinals a first down. And so finally, Angela Delvecchio making herself known to Judy Abunza, sacking her the 44-yard line. So I always liked in this game how certain fields, like you look at Ekman Akers um, for Kimmy Ekman, you look at um, Dimitri Dome, Phillips Field, Steel Stadium, uh, Dabaguchi Arena, I believe it's called. And that is an awesome punt. Barely touching out of bounds or else I would have been stuck there. Probably would have been a touchback anyways. But I like how those fields um, have like a connection to the players. The players live here and it makes it feel more special and like you're really playing in the backyard. Uh, I've always liked games that take, that was a risky pass on my part. He dropped back in coverage and came for the blitz, taking me off guard. So it looks like the Cardinals play a pretty loose defense and Sidney Weber gains the first down, uh, barely. So they play a pretty loose de defense here. We'll be able to take advantage of that. Uh, if I can't adjust here and actually make uh, a pass. And intercepted by Ray Tran at our own 45-yard line. So they get pretty good field position to start off this drive. 
And that is nowhere fast. And somehow they pick up four yards on that quick screen to rate. Uh, was that to Fred Benson? So drop for a loss there. Looks like they didn't gain any yardage. And Angelo Devecchio missing another opportunity for his sack. And Akimek Connor coming in with a big hit, preventing Judy Abunza from making a first down. So it looks like they're going to go four to the field goal. And Jorge Garcia coming in with a sack, preventing them from getting that field goal off. So Sydney making a quick gain of five yards in that rushing play. And I got her out open in the flat, and Sydney makes the leaping grab. Checking down the sidelines, she makes it to the 20, and is taken down by a quick Judy Boons at the 19-yard line of the Arizona Cardinals. So I was at the Bulls game last night. Uh, the Bulls only scored a measly 26 points in the first half. Awful. It's one of the worst first halves I've seen in since the NCAA championship last year with Butler and UConn. Uh, but they came back to 34 points in the fourth quarter to take the game and win. And I would not, I did not mean to get that to Sidney Weber. And looking for uh, Jorge. But Flood is a good play when you're close to the end zone. Got Jorge open across the middle and he makes the catch in the end zone, giving us an early lead in the first quarter. But the Bulls came back to win with 34 points in the fourth quarter. Derrick Rose taking over with 17 in the fourth. Uh, we're going to call Flood again, try to hit up Achmed here, coming across the middle, and he gets the reception at the goal line and sneaks on in for two points. we got a quick 8-0 lead, and it's tough to manage your players when it's a sunny um, game as the players move quicker, uh, the, field's not, uh, the field's more easily run on, and you're playing on turf. The, the shorter grass obviously it speeds them up as well. So it's tough to make passes. Your players are running routes very quickly, especially in 2002 at least. Uh, in the original backyard football, it's more realistic and not as quick. But it was just how the game, uh, the programmers uh, made this game. And Fred Benson, speedy Fred Benson, breaking four tackles of my weak Swiss cheese defense there and trucking for 80 plus yards, making an 8-6 game as they go for two here. Sydney Weber with the interception, keeping us at a lead of two points here in the second quarter. So Ronnie, special teams aficionado, getting the ball out to uh, the R33 yard line, setting us up for this drive. And Angelo DeVecchio blocking, giving Billy Jean Blackwood a big hole to make it 11 yards. Ahmed Khan open across the middle for a pass of about 20. And we're going to call upon Sydney Weber for this pass, and she's got it. The near sideline all the way to the two yard, four yard line. So I'm going to try to set us up for quick out to Jorge. And he's open across the middle with two touchdown receptions early on in this game. Only 20 yards, but that's an efficient 20 yards, giving us two touchdowns, 12 points. So Sidney Weber, wide open, ready for the two-point conversion, but Stonehands dropping the ball in the end zone. So it could have recovered an onside kick there. Ronnie Dobbs comes sailing in for the special teams tackle. Good coverage on that kickoff. And that is a fumble, two fumbles in a row, and I was scared. After the last two games when fumbles have resulted in eventual touchdowns for the other team, I was expecting a problem with Ronnie Dobbs with a touchdown-saving tackle here. So it looks like we're going to have to keep Fred Benson off the uh, off the ball here. And Ronnie Dobbs, full of energy, comes bowling in, knocking out Judy Abunza after no game. And Angelo Dovecchio finally beating counterpart Marky Dobbs, or Marky Dubois, uh, for the sack. So it looks like we're going to be able to return a punt for once. Get Ronnie Dobbs back and a little bit more energy than Ahmed Khan. And breaks the first tackle, giving us a glimmer of a hope to get a score in before the end of the half. So, like I usually do, we're going to replace two receivers here. Ronnie Dobbs will take Ahmed's spot and Jeremiah will take Jorge's. Uh, and see if we can't get Ronnie Dobbs open here in the middle. And Ronnie Dobbs with his poor hands gives the Cardinals an opportunity to change this game up and get a touchdown here to begin. And Fred Benson making the reception. Let's see if they try to kick a field goal. And they will. And they knock it home, capitalizing on my miss, uh, my, my error, giving them a 
nine points on the game. So I'm going to try to get out of bounds, not fumble the ball, and wait for a touchdown. But um, we're dominating in terms of a nothing other than total passing yards. It's pretty even. I would say this is somewhat even. But um, they're they're taking it home in terms of time of possession, so hopefully we can turn that around here, get a more commanding lead against the, the Cardinals, who should not even have a touchdown. Fred Benson... Fred Benson has a uh, insane speed today with a speed of 10. Judy Abunza is a pretty fast quarterback as well. And um, Mindy Weaver, a pretty good option in receiving, and she's got 9 uh, out of 10 in skill points for uh, as a wide receiver. So they are definitely superior in terms of um, overall skill points, but we got the lead right now. So Ahmed... Not ideal, but gets the ball out to our own 10-yard line. Sets up a miscue there. Not getting Sidney Weber the ball. I'm trying to get my guys out of the shadow of my goalpost so I can set up some room for a pass. Try not to get a safety like I did against the Chiefs. And that was my fault. My mouse got caught on the wire right here. But I should be able to get a, get a first down now. Sidney Weber wide open in the flat. Gets it out to the Cardinals' 48-yard line. So them playing loose defense. Try to get it across the middle. And Sidney Weber, what a catch. A leaping grab off the tipped ball. So Judy got the Jorge Garcia open on the outside. And he dives ahead for a big gain. So you can see right there, there is positives to diving instead of being just simply tackled. So don't disregard it. Don't think it's foolish. Try to get it to Ahmed. And it is picked off somehow by Judy Abunza. And she fumbles it straight out of bounds. Ahmed Khan getting owned by Judy Abunza. So we're actually in danger of potential upset uh, with the, the... Oh, and Sidney Weber, the pinball, recovers it after the ball, just shoots around eight different players, it seemed. And there's a nice igloo. It looks like Demetri was tinkering around with in his offseason. But the Minnesota Vikings... Goodness, Sidney Weber. And Sidney Weber fumbles on the Arizona Cardinals one yard line and Judy Boonza gets out of the shadow of her goalpost getting out to the four yard line Jorge Garcia see if we can't get in for and thankfully Ray Tran did not make that reception or it was that Mindy Weaver or Dwight whatever it was so um, Ronnie Dobbs making a nice play giving us the opportunity to potentially block this punt and that doesn't seem to be a, re a reality and Ronnie Dobbs fumbling it a comedy of errors to start off the third quarter and the second half for both teams as Jorge Garcia gets the ball back to us so I'm just gonna throw this one out of play and live to fight another day see if we can't dial up Sidney Weber on the swinger play here safe option and Sidney Weber is wide open she's in for six giving us a two score lead finally in some breathing room so it looks like we're up by 11. Might as well go for two, try to make it 13. Sydney Weber open in the flat, and she reels it in, giving us a 13-point lead and some more breathing room after a stressful third quarter that lasted predominantly in the Arizona Cardinals' uh, end of the field. But because of unsightly turnovers and comedy of errors by both teams overall, uh, no yardage was really gained by either team in the third quarter, so I'm going to have to check those stats after the game. And Judy Abunza breaking, break, breaking, breaking a tackle, and Jorge Garcia making a critical play at our own 43-yard line, preventing them from getting a first down. And that is a fumble, and Angela keeps them from capitalizing on that opportunity, giving us the ball back. So I'm going to switch this up, get Ronnie Dobbs' ability to receive. And after two... Two fumbles in a row by Ronnie Dobbs, giving the Arizona Cardinals a glimmer of hope here. Judy Boonza bulls ahead and gets past Angela first, but is eventually taken down by a pursuant Angela Del Vecchio at the Bears' own 26-yard line. So a quick out to Fred Benson, breaks a tackle, and jumps ahead to the middle of the field for a gain of about seven. And uh, Sidney Weber comes just flying on in taking out Fred Benson and preventing uh, an advance for a first down. But Fred Benson is tackled, and he does not gain the first down. After a review, his knee was down before they reached the first down marker, giving the Bears back the ball 
in their own territory at their own 13 yard line. So a fast Fred Benson quickly deals with a quick out to Sidney Weber. Trying to dial up Jorge Garcia, but he steps out of bounds. Making it a critical third down play now for Jorge Garcia, who is open, had the opportunity and had the first down ahead of him, but could not hold on to the ball. So we're gonna have the Bears are gonna have to punt this one away. Angelo Delvecchio bringing out the big leg, and they get a friendly Bears bounce, taking the astroturf of Dimitri Dome and allowing them to get a few extra yards on that punt. So probably the Cardinals' first punt return of the year comes here in Game 7 against the Chicago Bears. They continue to run that draw play, so if you see a combination of players, Fred Benson, Marky Dubois, Trudy Abunza, expect a lot of running plays and a lot of draws. So they're open across the middle, and thankfully Jorge Garcia is there to prevent any fe further bleeding. And we're going to have to rush the quarterback now, and Angel Lovecchio is there to stop that play before it had any hopes of developing. And Judy Punza covers yet another fumble of the Arizona Cardinals. Sacked by Sidney Weber, comes flying in from the cornerback position to make a big play against Judy Bunza, making it a long field to go travel. And it looks like that was their last play for the Arizona Cardinals today. We're just going to have to weed out the clock and um, run out the clock here, take a hit um, from Judy Bunza, and Sidney will go down, but the Bears will have the win. So checking out the total stats today, nine turnovers by the Arizona Cardinals. Somehow they stay within reach uh, throughout the entirety of this game, only going down by a 13-point margin. Uh, either Neither team is very successful on third downs today, although the Bears dominated in the air with the Cardinals dominating rushing-wise, evening out this game a little bit, but the Bears come through with the turnover advantage of 9-4. 4 to 9 whatever you want to say giving the bears a 22 to 9 victory. Checking an inter interesting third quarter only 108 yards gained by the bears but only 8 points scored and 108 yards gained while the Arizona Cardinals only getting 6 total yards getting zero first downs and only having the ball for 21 seconds and giving up four turners only give up an eight surprising points. So we'll check out around the league we're most concerned obviously with our division. The Cowboys thankfully take down a struggling Detroit Lions team as the Packers go down to the Wombats. Two, three close games for all our division rivals, and I'd like to see the scorebook for this game, a 6-4 to four victory for the Minnesota Vikings. It looks like the Vikings had problems in their own territory, giving up two safeties to the Washington Redskins, but eventually getting the victory. So today we'll check, it, uh, check out the Cowboys-Lions Thanksgiving-type game. Zero first down or zero third down conversions, only 337 total yards between both teams throughout that game. A defensive struggle won by the Cowboys. Wombat sticking on the Packers. The Packers once again won yardage wise, but lost the turnover battle, losing to the Wombats 15 to 13, dropping the Packers into third place behind the Vikings. Um, but the Vikings win the game against the Detroit or the Washington Redskins. Redskins. Gain 310 yards, but somehow lose the game to only a 55-yard gaining team, Minnesota Vikings, who had the ball for well over half the game, winning 6-4, to four, so an anomaly there. 30 touchdown passes in a season for our quarterback, Billy Jean Blackwood, quite a feat there. And we'll check the standings real quick. We've got a four-game lead on our weak division rivals, the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. Packers must have the tiebreaker, leading, giving themselves... Still a second place slot in our division. The Lions are a cellar dweller at 2-5. and five. We'll check the game stats for uh, the Washington Redskins here. Zero touchdowns. One sa two safeties, one by Belinda Winters and the other by backyard kid Lisa Crockett, who came up with two interceptions, a sack, three tackles, and a safety. So the defensive MVP there, Lisa Crockett. Uh, but that is not enough two safeties, the anemic red zone offense and passing attack that is the Washington Redskins. Uh, it looks like rushing wise, Ben Known, an, a studly kick returner and ru uh, rushing, running back, gives them 154 yards on the ground. So next game we'll be taking down the, hopefully taking down the uh, backyard central cellar dwellers, the Hornets. Two and five in the backyard central, so we're playing that at home. So we got a nice home stand here. 
at the Metro Civic Playground. So we'll get started with that in Game 8 in the second half of our season as we look to pursue a division title and a playoff berth. So see you guys in Game 8.